your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city, for the uncircumcised and the unclean shall not come to you. Verse 2. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. Lose yourself from the boards of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. The Bible says, For thus says the Lord God, You have sold yourselves for nothing, and you shall be redeemed without money. And then Psalm chapter 57 and verse number 8, the Bible talks about the dawn being awakened. And I invite the entire sanctuary to read this verse. Can we go one, two, three? Awake my glory. I can't hear you. Awake, lute, and harp. Now let's raise our voices. The last part, I will awaken my dawn. Lift up your right hand up high. And shout together with me and say, I will awaken my dawn. Somebody awakening their dawn, they don't talk like you. Can you say in a command, I will awaken my dawn. Somebody repeat after me and say, now that the night is gone. And the morning is coming. If it refuses to manifest. I declare, I shall awaken the morning in the name of Jesus to the glory and to the praise of his name. Can somebody say amen? Now, I am assuming I have a client and this client is seated next to me and they are asking me, Pastor, I have heard that it is time for me to walk into a new dawn. I have heard that some dawns are awakened by the Lord. But I have also heard you say that some dawns must be awakened. And therefore, pastor, what should I do so that I can awaken my morning and so that my morning can be a reality? And this client that is seated next to me, I would definitely drop some seven points to them and now leave it to them that they can go and do some homework and awaken their dawn, whatever their dawn is in their lives. And I would tell them, number one, that you need to purpose to grow towards your dawn. So the first step to awaken your dawn is grow towards your dawn. Now, it is important that we realize that some dawns, my brother, look at some memo on that phone, a notebook on that phone. The first step on how to awaken your dawn is to you yourself grow towards your dawn. You need to invest some time. You need to invest some prayers. You need to invest some Bible study. You need to invest in some Christian study that you can be able to awaken your dawn. The Bible says, awake, awake. Awake, oh my glory. Awake, lute and harp. Because it's time to, for music. And then he says, I will awaken my dawn. Any woman and any man who decides to grow and they bury themselves in knowledge. They begin to grow and to bend towards their dawn. If the dawn is on this side, they begin to grow towards there. And Wapendua, this precious afternoon, one of the ways to awaken your dawn is to ensure that you are growing every day, every hour, every minute, every year to the glory and to the praise of his name can we all say amen and you know something that if you are going to awaken our dawns then we must go back no wonder i appreciated when pastor nicodemus told people last sunday that the mentorship class that is putting people on a daily study of the word 
has made him to grow. And each one of us must know that every dawn that is needed, it must be awakened in Jesus' mighty name. Now, if you grow a plant and you decide to do an experiment on the effect of light on the plant and then you enclose it in a dark place, how many of you did that experiment? And then there is an open window where light is coming from. What happens to that plant? Let's talk this afternoon. What happens to that plant as it grows? It begins to bend in the direction of the light. I declare in the name of Jesus, in this brief word, may you grow towards your millions in Jesus' mighty name. Now, that is a good place to say a better amen. May you grow towards a debt-free life in Jesus' name. May you grow to a place you can be able to pay your bills in Jesus' name. May you grow towards your visas in Jesus' mighty name. One of the best ways for any man to awaken their dawn, they begin to grow. Bishop Gashara had a theme. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And then on Monday, I see like three missed calls. And five o'clock, I returned the calls because we were in the Muru making declarations for Kenya. And then I asked him, Bishop, what is it? He said, you know what? The guest preacher is held up from Uganda. And now the people are expecting. And our first day of the conference is so special. Would you, are you in a distance you can turn and come? That is five something, five fifteen. I asked him, when does the preacher stand? I will do it for you, Bishop. You are an elderly man. He said, it is 6.30. So I had about an hour to turn. And in one hour, I already had a message on seven blessings that come upon every man who pursues knowledge. And one of the blessings now that their theme was knowledge is that as we continue to grow, as we continue to pursue knowledge, then we are able to grow. I declare in the name of Jesus, whatever shall not come by a miracle, it shall come by growth. Can I hear you say amen? It shall come by growth. There is a time I demonstrated and said, if this is your miracle that is there, and you are here, every step you take towards growing, and you are growing, and you are getting impartation, you are nearing your miracle. You are nearing your miracle. And as you continue to grow, you touch it by faith. So I began to change my teaching that all miracles happen by prayer. I began to realize some miracles, they happen automatically as you grow towards them. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. The second way to attract your dawn is um, I'll give diverse thoughts to this class. Register a business name by faith and start by faith. Register a business name by faith and start it off by faith. It is one of the ways to awaken your dawn. And I prayed this morning like I encouraged you the other day. I told us every member of Tattoo Chapel, please have two or three micro businesses that can turn around your situation to the glory and to the praise of his name. I don't know how many people hear that to that council, but I can tell you there are people I know here, they are doing well. Let me tell you, employment comes to an end someday. And at the end of it all, the boss that loves you so much may decide you are among those ones that are going to be rendered redundant in that company. You need to register a business name by faith and don't wait for millions. 
please start it wherever you are in Jesus name hey can I hear this church say amen start it up don't wait for millions every time I pass our sister Sarah pale kwa, kwa, kwa kibada pale and she's selling sometimes she is so busy anauza and sometimes she is on the closet and she is busy sewing i would and sometimes she even doesn't see she is so busy closeting and at the end of the day i say who you lazima atabarikiwa kwa sababu hajaketi nyumbani wapendwa let us not sit at home if you can sell samosas if you can do this if you can do the other the dawn is not awakened as you sit and sleep at home it is awakened as you move like the four lepers and then as you move the lord amplifies your footsteps and the syrians think it, it is a big army nakumbe ni wewe register that business name launch it by faith and i declare to all that are heeding this call to all that are heeding this call may the lord grow your business from hundreds of shillings to thousands of shillings may it rise up from thousands even to millions in the name of the lord may it rise up from millions to billions to the glory of the lord wapendwa kama unaweza nena na luga mpaka hii mshipa inatoka unaweza pia fanya biashara hebu nisikie wapendwa tukisema amen and that resistance that comes when people launch, launch out we break it in jesus mighty name may the clients honor you may they keep their promises and may you live and return with something home in Jesus name. Because sometimes launching is not enough. There is a resistance that you must break through. And yesterday in the mentorship academy, we saw the specific type of prayer that is able to break resistance. It is not a 5 hour prayer. It is 1 hour plus invested in the Lord opening the doors for you. So I see all of you being great businessmen. This side it has some good gap and social distance. May the Lord use you in a special way. May the Lord give you a powerful blessing as you launch out into the business world. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, some dawns don't just come. They must be awakened. Somebody say amen. I know what it feels when you cannot pay your bills on time. I know what it feels when you are in a state that you cannot even help yourself. Leave alone helping a neighbor. We have been there not once, not twice. And I'm a testimony. God can move you from a place. There was a time to take her out and buy her a cup of tea and a samo or a chapati it would take a miracle it would take a miracle chai tu na chapati mpaka najiuliza sio mke wangu ananiangalianga hivi anashindwa kwani hata siku moja siwezi kupelekwa nini out but let me tell you that was a day it was a dark day but the Bible says, weeping may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. May the morning appear now in the mighty name of Jesus. How I pray that after a few weeks, you will be able to tell somebody and to tell a person that indeed, that I have a business name to the glory and to the honor of his name. And that it is not in the drawers. It is functioning to the praise and to the honor of his name. Somebody say amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them, the way I look at you, the way I see you, you can trade. You can do business. 
and still serve God. Can somebody say amen? amen. Number three, receive fatherhood blessings. Receive fatherhood blessings. And I pray that in Jesus' mighty name, That the Lord is going to manifest himself in a very special way because he's a faithful God. Glory be to his name. Receive fatherhood blessings. Now the person above you in authority, ordained of God, separated of God, it is important that this precious and wonderful morning to know that before you start a business, before you launch out, or could be, I would call it, that you need blessings from your spiritual authority before you go far and burn more thousands and burn more millions. It is important that you get fatherhood blessings to the glory and to the praise of your name. And not just a spiritual father, even a biological father or a person that plays the role of a guardian upon your life. It is important as I tell you my son I study the gap of your parents and I declare that you are blessed and highly favored in Jesus mighty name. Fatherhood blessings take somebody far because it's an institution ordained of God. It is an institution separated by God and it is separated to the glory and to the praise of his name where you are stuck, there are words that can deliver you. Where you are oppressed, there are words that can deliver you. Where you are humiliated, fatherhood blessings can create a new portal around your life. And you see, when somebody has been given to you as a leader, they don't have to shake their legs as they speak to your lives. They don't have to ask like the Wakorino, Jeshurun. They don't have to ask Mikaeri to bring the line. Iri na baba. The line is already there to be able to speak to your life. And I declare in Jesus' name, may you receive the blessings of prosperity. Hey, can you say amen? The blessings of increase, the blessings of favor, the blessings of goodness. In the name of the Lord, you may not have come as a person, but I want to declare corporately that your struggle has come to an end. Your pain has come to an end. Your suffering has come to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ, and may the glory of God continually be manifested upon your life. Can somebody say amen? amen? Fatherhood, blessings upon your life. Glory be to God. Number four, you need to master favor. This client that is seated asking me, what should I do? I will tell them number four, you need to know how to master favor. Favor must be mastered. There is a way favor can be lost so quickly. And then after losing it, you wonder what exactly happened. It is important to know, how do I keep the door open? How do I keep this relationship? How do I remain submitted to my boss? How do I remain submitted to my supplier? You will need to learn how to master favor. Can somebody say amen? amen? How many of you have seen people blessed? But at the end of the day, because they never knew how to master favor, they lose it at, at once. I know a brother, he can go to any high office in this nation. Especially if he buys that suit of Charles Giorgio that has got stripes from here down. And a nice shoe tie. Wow, he knows how. He knows how. But he does not keep those doors open because it requires wisdom on how to master favor. How do you relate with somebody 
that is so oppressive to you. You will need to come up to a place whereby you know how to master favor so that you can keep the door open. Somebody can give you a job today and decide they will never give you again. Because when you worked, yes, you delivered, but you left every structure in that company damaged. That yes, you did it to your level best, but they feel they don't want to give you a second chance because you did not behave in a manner that can attract more favor, more grace, more goodness, more connection, and more supply. It is called mastery. Favor. I pray that in Jesus' mighty name, that you shall be able to master your favor in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, can I hear somebody say amen? Every door meant for you, it will not close before its time. You shall know what to speak. You will know what to post on Facebook. You will know what to tell people as a part of mastering your favor. Can I hear us say amen? Number five. Are we in five? You need to practice financial integrity. And I will not dwell on that. I dwelt on it on Sunday. Each one of us needs to separate our money from God's money. And once we separate our money from God's money, then we are going to see the goodness of God manifested upon us. And Tatu Chapel, I began with the co-workers in the morning and I told them that if you struggle with any other offering, don't struggle with the tithe. We gave a title or a name to a tithe this morning and I told them that a tithe is kingdom tax. Every kingdom must be funded to go to the next level. And each one of us must know that there is a dawn that is opened by the tithe. Can we see that dawn in Malachi 3.10 and then we go to 6 and 7. Let's see that dawn that is opened by financial integrity and God will bless us if you just give it us in the message Bible. And it will going to be a blessing to us. Why don't we look up? Help me. Help me conclude this. Why don't we go together? Let's, 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 let's go. One, two, three. Bring your full tithe to the temple treasury. See, it's a tax. So you bring it to the temple treasury. So there will be ample provisions in my temple. Now, you are not reading. Let's read it together. Test me in this. And see if I don't open up heaven itself to you and pour out blessings beyond your wildest dreams. Beyond your wildest dream. Ask your neighbor, if that is not a dawn, then what it is? What is it? If that is not a dawn, then what is it? Then let's go on. Let's go on. For my part, let's read together after we keep the tithe. For my part, I will defend you against marauders, protect your wheat fields and vegetable gardens against plunderers. The message of God of the angel armies. May you receive that message of the God of the angel armies. After we do that, let's raise our voices now a little higher. I was not hearing you well now. Can we go? You will be voted happiest nation. You will experience what it's like to be a country of grace. God of the angel armies says so. Is that not a dawn? It is a dawn. And finally 13, if there is 13... That is, that is enough. That is okay. Let us practice financial integrity to awaken your dawn. 
Now, I, I used to be chased a lot in high school. I couldn't even believe I would get a good grade. But there was our CU patron. Now he ministers in Britain. And he told me something. That after studying you people as a family, based on the appointments, we had a very nice CU patron. He would teach and do a lot of counseling. Sometimes spend a whole Saturday in his office and talk to us. And he told me, you need to teach your parents to begin to be faithful in tithing, even with the little amount that comes their way. And I began teaching them to tithe. And I remember that it was funded, the education in high school was funded with 500, another 500, then we didn't have a thousand shillings note. And it went on and on and on until the bazaar when we were clearing said, we have a balance to give you. Your dad has paid and paid until he has overpaid. But I had to teach them on the principle of tithing. And my dad was not even born again. I remember one time driving a truck. And he decided to pass by the way of college. And there were no phones those days. So I needed a photo like half an hour. Then I went and I found that he was there. You know, he drank for many years. And when Ari Shukahio truck, Akashika this handle, first staircase, second staircase, third down, I wondered whether that is a driver from Nairobi to Kampala, the way he was drunk. And what was in his hand? His hand had a tithe. And he said, I want a prayer. I persuaded him not to go for that journey, but I could still see in his jacket, there is still some more. There is still some more. And the tout, the uh, called Philip said, ah, he to Mezoia passed away to Ombe. To to I believe in those journeys, what was preserving him was the tithe that he was giving. Because when he climbed up and they took off, my only concern was to hear they have offloaded and they're on their way back. And when you ask them, are you on your way back? They just laugh and say, that is our job. Leave us alone. That is how we do it. May the Lord preserve our people. Because we as the children are faithful in tithing. In the name of Jesus, may there be no danger or calamity from home in Jesus' mighty name. That is home. Number six. Forgive yourself and start again. Forgive yourself and start again. There are some people who are not ready to move on because they cannot forgive themselves. Somebody say amen. I did not say you forgive others. I know you are very good at telling everybody you are forgiven. But ask your neighbor, have you forgiven yourself? That is a very important step to calling a new dawn. And finally, number seven. One of the best ways to awaken the dawn is being in the corporateness of other brethren. Kuwa katika umoja wa wapendwa wengine. A Sunday service a conference, a prayer meeting that you need to be in and the glory of the Lord is manifested upon us. May the Lord bless us as we continue to honor the corporateness of coming together. There are things that are spoken in a service that you cannot get when you are watching online. How many of us have, have seen that reality? There are things... Do you remember the days of the online church? How many of us discovered online cannot be the same with the physical? Even me after preaching here during the COVID-19. And you preach. I used to wonder, are they listening? Or are they eating chapati and taking tea? As they say, man, after two minutes they are back. After ten minutes they are lost. You see, that corporateness, the coming together, never assume the coming together together of brethren. 
May the Lord bless us and may the Lord give us a new dawn in Jesus' mighty name. Let's give the Lord a good hand of praise in the name of the Lord. A better hand, a better hand, a better hand to the praise and to the glory of the Lord's wonderful name. May the Lord bless our online church and may the Lord favor you greatly in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.